Today's guest is passionate about two things, technology and people. Kevin has spent more than 20 years embracing the evolution of personal and business technology. Please welcome Kevin Algeyer, the founder of Algeyer Consulting, a technology and productivity consulting form with a single purpose, helping residential and business clients realize the unlimited potential of their technology investment. Please welcome Kevin to the show. How are you? I'm doing so good. How are you doing, Jill? Good. I, You know what? I'm excited to talk today because I love gadgets. I love technology. <laughs> I love to spend money on them and not know how to use them. <laughs> if anybody else out there is the same as me, they're going to love this conversation because you too love technology, right? I absolutely do love technology. In fact, I, I, that was a great intro because there are two things that I'm passionate about. And one of those is technology. I've always been fascinated about technology ever since I was a little kid. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's all consuming of my life, but I love it. It's fantastic. Well, Especially and, when it works right. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> that's, that's the majority of, of most of us, our exposure to tech is like, okay, what happened? What did I do? How did I break it? <laughs> But for us as business owners, we need to know what tech solutions are right for us. And how do we know that? Because that can be one of the most difficult things is knowing what we need, when we need it. And also to like, when is investing in technology too much? Do you know what? I'm so sorry, Jill. You, My Zoom app just completely quit on me. Oh my gosh. Speaking of technology. <laughs> I know. That that was really, I don't know that I've ever seen that before. It's because so, we did it specifically for this podcast, just to show oh. everybody that even when we're experts on something, stuff can still go wrong, right? Something always goes wrong. And and you know, it's not it's not what happens, it's how you recover from it. Agreed. So we're gonna recover nicely. So go ahead and ask that question again, because I, yeah, I, sure. I think I heard most of it, but yeah. So for us as business owners, I know for me, like it's hard because you see all these amazing things and you're like, I need that. I don't know how to use it, but I know I need it. So how do we know mm -hmm. what tech solutions are right for us and our business for where we're currently at? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, so I know you love gadgets. I love gadgets. I love tinkering. I love playing. Uh, one is that I have to go out and learn new technologies all the time. And so, and I think a lot of people kind of feel that that same way, especially in small business, people feel like, you know, I, I need to see what's out there. And I think that's fantastic. Um, the, the trouble that I think I see a lot of small business owners getting themselves into is they they feel like they have to adopt everything. And that's just simply not true. It's, it's great to go out and, and test and try and see what's out there. Because I think the second you stop doing that, the second you stop exploring is when... Um, things start to become stagnant and stale. And um, there are new technologies that are coming out all the time. Um, and you have to you have to play with them and test them and see if there's something that's going to work. But ultimately, to answer your question, um, not every piece of technology is going to work well for your business. In fact, just before this call, we were talking about a piece of technology that I had pl been playing with that just didn't work well for me. And, and I just said, you know what, I'm going to cut my losses. I'm going to set it off to the side. Maybe down the road, I'll, I'll look at it again and see if it's going to work for the business. Uh, but not everything is going to work for the business. And the advice that I would give is be picky and choosy. Uh, you want to be cost sensitive, right? Because we, we're all small business owners and we have to look at financials, right? So we have to be cost sensitive. Uh, but we also have to look at the impact that that technology is going to have on the business. Is it going to have a positive impact? Wow, I just did it again. That's really bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, it, it, if it's going to make a positive impact for the business and it's cost effective, I think that's a no brainer. Um, if you have people, you want to be sensitive to how that technology is going to impact the culture of your business. Um, I, I firmly believe that culture is one of the biggest assets of any business. Um, it's extremely hard to create and cultivate and maintain and it's really easy to destroy if you do the wrong thing. So you want to make sure it's impacting. Well, and I'm glad that you brought that up because I think it's important that, you know, there's so much that's changing probably every single day. 
it's like how do we learn to embrace that we're that that cons- that technology is constantly changing and in order to stay up to it like up to date with everything we've got to continue to play with it and learn it and like you said it's not going to always be the thing that works out or changes our business but what are some things that we could do as small business owners to help embrace that and be like okay the year of 2023 i'm gonna do this i'm gonna learn this i'm gonna be more open to technology what's the best way to do that Ooh. well first and foremost you have to have the motivation right if you don't have the motivation to do something chances are it's probably not going to happen once you have that motivation then it's a matter of finding the right tools and the right people to help engage in some of that uh, some of that research and 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 some of the, to answer some of those questions. Um, I, for me personally, I I have to stay on technology all the time, right? If I if I skip a day, I feel like I'm behind and I I don't know that I'll ever catch up. I'm a little bit different. I'm an outlier, uh, but I think for most people, you know, just simply, uh, just an easy tip is uh, listen to podcasts. You know, find a couple of really good tech podcasts, gain some trust in those presenters, those producers. And and just keep your ear to the rail, um, and that's going to that's going to help you to just always have that kind of in the back of your mind, and it will also help expose you to certain technologies and and new things that that are, people are talking about out in industry um, that you wouldn't otherwise hear about. Um, I can if I look around my office and if I think about how we run our business, I bet you half of the technology that we use is something that I was exposed to in listening to a podcast or over, overhearing a conversation with, a, uh, uh, you know, one of our clients or, um, you know, things like that. Just being aware of what's out there and just having that motivation makes a big difference. And there's probably a little bit of strategy that comes into it too, because technology, the systems that technology supports us in, those have to grow with our business. So what mm-hmm. what are strategies that you use for your business or the clients that you work with? What are some things, how we can improve that technology that either we currently have or we know we need to change? Ooh, um, okay, let me answer the second one first. How, okay. how do we know when it's time to change? Listen to your people. Honestly, if you... We work with so many clients that have um, old legacy systems in place that the users, you know, those that are on manufacturing floors or or the print house or you know, the, kind of the lower level employees, the worker bees, they know that it's an, an old legacy system that needs to be replaced. Um, whether or not management hears that is maybe a different story. So listen to your people and they'll tell you when, when they feel like it's time to maybe upgrade. That doesn't mean, of course, you jump necess- you know, um, just, just based on their recommendation, but that's a good key indicator that it might be time to look for something else. Um, and in terms, of, uh, in terms of strategy for using new technology, um, that's, you know, every business is different. And again, it really comes back to um, working with your w- working with your teams and um, answering simple questions. It doesn't have to be complicated at all, but answering simple questions. You know, going back to the cost effectiveness. But what is this technology technology going to do for our business? And does it make sense to do that? Um, if we're in a business uh, in manufacturing, does it make sense to spend a, a half a million dollars on, uh, you know, a video production system? Well, maybe not, but maybe it does. You know, it, it kind of depends on your overall goals as a business. Um, a lot. I'll use one word. I'm going to sum all this up by one word: alignment. Ooh, does technology word. align with your overall company goals and company strategy? If it does, great, you're on the right path and don't stop, don't become stagnant. Um, you know, it's ever evolving, but if it's not aligned with your overall company goals, it might be time to revisit that. And don't be afraid to bring in outside help. You know, find someone like me or someone else who can look at it very uh, objectively and you know, who, who works with other people in the same industry and other industries to get an outsider's perspective on um, on technology and, and maybe directions you should go. So there is a lot of strategy for sure, um, but alignment is a key part to that. 
I love that word. It's so true. Like there's, so when you think about like systems and processes in your business, not just technology, but all of them, I'm, I'm like alignment is such a good word for that. And really, I mean, yeah. this is the perfect time. You know, the beginning of the year is the perfect time to be looking at all of that stuff because we want to make sure that the upcoming year we we're pushing forward with the best technology, the best systems that we have. And I know because we have worked together for so long, I know that your company focuses on lean and rapid solutions. I don't know how many times I've called you and been like, I broke it. Can you fix it? <laughs> but how does a business owner keep things simple when there's so many options out there? Hardware, software, cloud solutions, you know, what what programs do I use? Because there's always, you know, no matter what program that you're looking at, there's probably two, three, or 50 competitors. It's like, how do you know which one to use? Oh my goodness. It it can make your head spin and it can feel very overwhelming. I know you, you feel that. I feel that. I work in the industry and I feel that. Uh, it can certainly be overwhelming. So I, a little bit about my history. I spent 17 years working as the director of IT for a, a fairly large company based in Utah. And uh, in my 17 years there, we grew from 110 employees to over 1,300 employees. So very quick growth. Um, one of the things that I focused on, and, and in large part because the business focused on it, was a, a, a philosophy or system called lean manufacturing. And the idea of lean manufacturing is identifying types of waste in manufacturing processes and figuring out how to pull that waste out. And while a lot of that um, was specific to manufacturing, and it's easy to see waste in manufacturing, um, I apply the same principles to everything that I do. And I, I would, for the listeners, I would encourage them to, to do a little research into lean manufacturing, lean office, lean whatever, um, because the principles are priceless. But um, I've taken those principles and applied it to our business from the start, said, look, we're not going to, we're not going to. So one thing that I've been very sensitive to is as, as we started our business years ago um, was to take some of those lean principles and apply it directly in our business and, um, and, and not to engage in wasteful activity from the start. It's harder for more mature companies to do that because they don't have the luxury of, hey, this is a brand new business. This is a brand new um, setup, brand new processes. But for us, we did have that luxury. And we just said, from the start, we're going to be I like to say we're lean and mean, and uh, we just have a small team, but we service so many clients and we're able to do that because of our lean thinking and the technology that we use is lean. We, we use very specific technology for our business that helps us to be super lean. And so we don't really have a lot of wasteful activity. Um, and so, and, and, in large part because of the technology that we've chosen to use helps us to achieve that. Now, I know that you're primarily Apple based as I am. I've got, I've got, I'm going to string a question on you just because I think it's going to be a fun one. What is your yeah. favorite? What? Okay. So two questions. One, what's your favorite Apple product? And two, like, what's your favorite thing or like gizmo or gadget that does something amazing for your Apple products? Ooh, does it have one, to right? be a non-Apple product? That it is a be. tough one. <laughs> okay, so if if I were, let me rephrase it just a little bit. If I were on a deserted island and I could only have one device, what would that device be? That's even better. Ooh, that's a really tough one because I love my MacBook Pro. I use a 14-inch MacBook Pro and I do a lot of video work. So I love having that power, uh, but I also love my iPad and I love my iPhone and I love my watch and I love it all. But if, if I had to choose, if you held a hypothetical gun to my head and said, you can only have one device, Kevin, what is it? Uh, from a functionality standpoint, I think I'd have to say my MacBook Pro. 
it goes almost everywhere with me. It it's fully functional. I I spent a lot of time on Final Cut Pro uh, doing video editing and Logic Pro on audio editing, uh, which doesn't seem like a normal thing for somebody who does what I do. But it, in our business, we do a lot of work in Final Cut, which is really fun, uh, thanks to the pandemic. Um, and so I would probably say that with a, a, a lifetime supply of power and fast Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say the uh, proverbial deserted island with no Wi-Fi or power. <laughs> Oh, it'll be the most connected remote island you'd ever see. <laughs> uh, in terms of gadget, oh, I I would have to say I love my Apple Watch. You just got the new I, one, I'll right? I'll call it a gadget. The, the, so this is the Ultra. Yeah, you can't really see it that well, but this is the Ultra and I love it. It is so good. The battery will last. I was I took a quick trip to New York a couple of weeks ago. I was there and back um, the next day. And when I got back at the end of the second day and I was go, go, go there, the battery was still at like 40%. The battery life is awesome. I love the screen. The new technology that's built in is amazing. Um, in terms of software or services, I love Apple Pay. It is one of the best services. Like in terms of features, it's one of the best features I think that Apple has rolled out for a while. I love Apple Pay. Just the power to walk in somewhere and go tap, tap, and you're done is awesome. And eventually, you know, driver's licenses and, you know, other things, you know, Delta, my Delta um, boarding passes are there. And it's just, people ask me every time I board a flight, they're like, how'd you do that with your watch? How did you get on the plane with just your watch? Anyway, I I, oh, I could talk about that all day long, but I, I love those. I love everything Apple does just about is just perfection. I, you know what I was thinking about when you said that you could do that with your Apple watch. I'm like, how did you do that? Like, but it's so <laughs> true because there's so many things like we have these amazing, I mean, we have like a computer in our hand with our phones. We have all this amazing technology, but we don't really know how to use it to its full capacity because, you know, we just yeah. use it for what we use it for. But really, like any other system or process in our business, like it can usually do so much more than we think. And maybe that could be like one of the things, too, in the new year is to be like, I'm going to look at the technology that I already have, talk to somebody who knows like everything about it and say, how could I use this more because there's probably things yeah. that we're using now that we're like, oh, I bought another thing when really I didn't need to do that because the thing I already have can do that, right? Yeah. Do you know, actually, you just said something a second ago that that made me think I have to mention something. Yeah. For me, one of the most important things on staying on top of technology is education. Educating yourself and educating your people. Uh, we actually, um, earlier this last year, and I don't know why we didn't do this 10 years ago, Jill. We should have, but, you know, um, better late than never. But we instituted um, earlier this year a program within our business that every employee spends at least four hours a week learning something new. So that's 10% of their time each week is devoted to learning something new. If you have questions about, uh, you know, maybe you don't feel totally confident in working with Active Directory, for example, spend 10% of your time this week learning Active Directory. Here's accounts to various different learning solutions, online learning solutions. Take that 10%, go off to a, a remote room somewhere. That's your time. Um, and that was modeled after companies like Google, who are who's notoriously famous for allowing their people to spend X amount of their time working on random projects. Um, and, you know, I just, I thought, what a great idea to say, look, stop what you're doing and learn, just go and learn. Um, and, and it's made a big impact since we introduced that it, it's great for employee engagement. It's really helped them. And, uh, and it helps them to, to just be better at their job. And who doesn't want that? Right. Totally. And it's sometimes even, the simple stuff, like literally before we got on this call, you helped me figure out the do not disturb on my computer, which sounds like, duh, everybody knows how to do that. But it's like those little tiny things that you just suffer, quote unquote, which is not suffering. Let's let's be honest. But, you know, it's these little tiny things that irritate you that you're like, ah, oh, I got to figure out how to do that. 
and but they never get done yeah. and so carving yeah. out that time you're right is so important to be like okay i'm gonna figure out how to do the do not disturb on my computer because there's got to mm-hmm. be a way because apple's thought of it i just need to ask the right person and sit down and learn about it it's so true yeah. so so true exactly yep so- S- simple things make a huge difference so true. And one question that I ask every single person on this podcast is what is your one piece of advice that you would give to a small business owner? Who, if I, I, I've got lots of advice I could give. It's hard to choose Um, one, right? It is. And it's really hard because every business is different. You know, every, every business has its own uh, its own strategy and philosophies and every business owner and every management team and every employee. It's just, it's so hard. Um, but if I could give just one piece of advice, oh, Jill, that's so hard. <laughs> um, I would say, and, and, and I'm kind of biased here and it's going to, it's going to have a technology spin on it. I would say, ensure that your strategy, this is kind of an overarching piece of advice that encompasses many things. I would say in, um, that you ensure that your overarching t- strategy for the business includes technology. That sounds really simple. Most technology or most companies don't have technology as part of their strategy. I know because I work with a lot of them and I've worked in businesses in the past where they just, it's an afterthought. Don't let it be an afterthought. Make it part of the business. Make that strategy part of the business. Bake it in. Bake it into your DNA. Technology is wonderfully enabling and wonderfully powerful if you let it. Um, most businesses, again, are very passive about technology and uh, and they don't allow it to help the business the way it can. It's super powerful if we let it. So just make sure that it's part of your discussions, that it's part of your strategy, and kind of along those lines, again, like I said before, listen to your people. They've got some great ideas and some great suggestions. You hire them. They're smart people. Listen to them and let them let them have a voice uh, when it comes to technology. And, um, you know, not everything will be implemented, but but give them a chance. Listen to them. But strategy, tech, technology and strategy. So good. I was thinking to myself, what's one piece of advice I would give myself about technology? I would be like, never give up. <laughs> No matter how many times it crashes, no matter how many times it like messes up, you mess up, just don't give up, like just keep going. And when people are like, okay, one, I'm frustrated because uh, I accidentally pushed my computer off the table and now the screen's broken. I wouldn't know anything about that. Or, um, hey, I can't get my stupid printer to work for some reason. <laughs> or bigger strategies like, hey, I know that technology needs to play a role in my company. How do people connect with you? Because you and I are many, many states away. How do people connect with you to get help get help with those strategies or even the simple day-to-day things that, you know, might be currently frustrating them. Yeah. Great question. So uh, our website is allgeierconsulting.com. Allgeier is my last name. And we started this business um, mainly offering consulting services, but we've pivoted over the years. We've kept the name. Um, My last name is a little funny to spell. It's uh, it's German, but it's A-L-L-G-A-I-E-R consulting.com. Um, I'm also on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm, you know, all things social uh, that way. Um, but that's probably the easiest way for people to find us. Absolutely. And I'll be sure to and, leave and, that but, in the before, show notes too. Oh, perfect. Yeah, great. Um, before we finish, I do want to tell you one really, really, I love this story. Um, in fact, should I just tell you now? Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. So I love this story because it it shows how really simple things can make a huge impact in your business. So one of our clients, we, we work in lots of different verticals. I think you probably know that we work in professional services and finance and healthcare and, you know, agriculture and real estate and everything. And one of our clients happens to be uh, a, a dental office. And he approached me a few years ago and said, you know, I, I, I want to, I want to feel like I'm connecting to doctors who refer their patients to us for dental work. And I said, great. Okay. Let's talk through this. So we strategize. We threw out some options and in the end, we came up with a really interesting solution that he said, I really like that. I'm going to do it. And here's what it is. When a doctor refers a patient to him, 
he, the patient comes in, they do good work and then they leave again. Right. And then billing happens. And, and that's kind of the end of it. The, the gap that he was trying to, to fill was reconnecting with the doctor to say after the engagement to say, thank you. And to say, this is what happened. He said, how do I do that? And I said, at the end of the day, take 10 seconds per patient. It doesn't have to be long. They don't want it to be long. You don't want it to be long. Take the number of patients you have for the day, carve out 10 to 15 seconds per patient, do a quick little video record. Hey, Dr. So-and-so, uh, I, I just had Johnny come in. You know, we discovered this and this. It looks like you prepared them well. We did this and this. And, you know, they're they're in great shape now. Thanks so much. Send. How cool is that? And so he's been doing that now for about five or six years. And his the doctors have been referring more patients because they feel that connection. They feel that 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 passion that he has for doing his work. And he's able to convey that back using video, which everybody has a webcam and a microphone and a computer and email. It's so easy to do. And it takes him maybe 10 minutes at the end of his day to record a short message and send it back to the referring doctor. And they love it. It has transformed their business. And that's a simple fix. That is part of his strategy. That connection back to the referring doctor is directly connected to his strategy. Well, and that's good for any business because who doesn't want a referral? I mean, when he, does he just ask the patient, like how, where the patient came from or what, like, is there a strategy around like, how do we get clients to tell us who sent them? So their particular, he's an endodontist. Um, and so he does mouth surgery. And so he, he, he doesn't, people aren't coming to him just to come to him, 90% of his patients are referred to him um, because they'll go to their dentist and the dentist will determine you need this kind of surgery or whatever. And so they say, go see this doctor. He's fantastic at it. And so that's how that referral process happens. Um, but, and, but he loves working with those doctors and, and or the dentists and, you know, he, that, that is the lifeblood of his business. And he wants to make sure that that happens. Prior to that, about the only level of engagement that he had was once a year, he would, or a couple of times a year, he would have one of his staff take a, a dozen cookies to the office and say, hey, we said, thank you, here you go. But this, this is a direct connection from doctor to doctor. And the referral doesn't forget that. And he appreciates that little gesture of connectivity between, you know, from doctor to doctor. And it makes a big difference. That's so good. Even it's, like, it's cool stuff. Tech technology is innate. Well, and when you break it down and be like 10 to 15 seconds, like who doesn't have 10 to 15 seconds? You know, like you wrap up your appointment with a client. It's like, you could just do it right then while it's fresh in your mind, while you're thinking about it. Oh my gosh. That's so good. So good. Yeah. Yeah. I've mentioned that story um, to a number of people over the years and not that they're doing the same thing, but it gets their creative juices flowing yes. because technology allows you to be creative. And they're like, okay, that doesn't fit us, but wait a second, we could take components of that. And now we're doing this. And it's just amazing. It's amazing what can happen when you're creative with technology. Yeah. And when you, it's thinking, really cool. You're thinking differently. You're thinking about, yes. like, I would have never thought about that, but you're like, that's so good. Like, I would love to get that. If I referred uh, somebody to somebody, else, like, I would love to know that one, they actually reached out, like the client reached out to the person, <laughs> but also that the person was able to help the client. Like, that's just awesome. And so fast too. Yeah. And that so they're well cool. taken care of. Cause, yeah. that, Cause that's one thing for us, you know, we occasionally refer people to, you know, if, if somebody needs a, a web app, for example, developed, we don't do that. We do just about everything else, but we don't do that. And so we'll refer to them to someone else, but to hear back from them that, Hey, we white glove service is happening here. They're well taken care of to me. That helps me to sleep better at night, knowing that my customer that I care about truly is well taken care of by someone else. Because a lot of times you refer people and it's like a black hole. It just, yeah, totally. you know, yeah. it goes in there and, and you never hear back. Mm-hmm. So cool. Oh my gosh. I love what you said a second ago about thinking differently. I almost wonder if a company, maybe a big fruit company should have a campaign about thinking differently. Mm -hmm. That would, <laughs> you know, be that was back cool. in the nineties. That was a, that was a big campaign. Was it nineties? That was a big campaign for Apple. Think differently. Yeah. It's so true. Look at what it's done. 
they've created things that none of us even thought were possible. And that's yeah. something that if we use that process in our own businesses to think differently, like who would have thought that a, that a dentist would have that much growth by just a 10 second video every day? Mm -hmm. Like that's crazy mm -hmm. simple. That's the, that's the part that we forget. I think so often is we yep. forget that it doesn't have to be complicated. Technology doesn't have to be complicated. It can just be simple. Yeah. Do you know what? Can I offer one more piece of advice? Of course. Yeah. Okay. So, and and this is something that is so baked into our DNA. I, I, I actually get this from my dad. Uh, he was absolutely a role model for me growing up in a lot of different ways. Uh, he was a, a physician and, and just, you could see and feel that he cared about people and that's, that's translated into what I do. But, um, one thing that we always do, and it's again, baked into our DNA is don't look at things from okay, we're back. <laughs> so the idea is don't look at things from your perspective only. Of course, that's important, right? Because you hopefully have the expertise to, to make recommendations. Always look at it from the other person's perspective. Put on their shoes, put on their glasses, put on their coat. How will this technology impact them on a daily basis? How will this impact them? Will it make them work a little bit longer at the office? Or does it mean that they can get home a half an hour earlier each day because we're automating some things? If you look at things and it's all the time, always look from their perspective because their perspective matters more than you know. And if they're not happy with something, if it's causing them heartache or stress or having to work longer, that's not a win. It could be an incredible system, an incredible piece of hard software service. But if it doesn't help them, it's not a win and there's going to be resistance. So always look from their perspective. I love that. So many good things that we talked about today. Thank you so much for being here. Like I said, I'll be sure to drop your links in the show notes. There's And people, if you're listening, you've got to check out Kevin's blog because there's so much good stuff on there. So I'll link that as well. Kevin, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you spending time with us. I know you're crazy busy, but it's always fun to chat with you. Jill, any chance I get to talk to you, I'll take it. You're amazing. And you do you. so many good things for so many people. So thanks for having me on. It's, it's, I could talk about this all day long. I know. Me too. Me too. Tell the next episode, <laughs> right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you.